Hey, so spring is here, or at least we're like ready for it to be here, right? And so I thought I would make these super cute pots, you guys. I'm decorating my house for Easter and for spring, but I don't decorate the way everyone else does. Like I don't have like Easter stuff necessarily, but I do like to create little vignettes or little things underneath my closures in my living room. And so those are the projects that I'll be working on over the course of the next few weeks. So I love these little ceiling pots for projects. First of all, they're super inexpensive, right? And they're shaped just like a terracotta pot. So you have like a base here. Um, but then we can go over it and we can create something super cute just using a few products and you can make it uh, so that it fits your aesthetic and your home perfectly. Hi, my name is Royce Hunt Bell, owner and operator of Recycled Treasures. Let's get started. So you guys, these are sold in the store and these are supposed to be so you can grow seedlings like indoors and then this pot is biodegradable so when you're ready to repot it into a larger pot you can just put them in there. But y'all know I'm not good with plants so I'm not, I'm not planting anything. We're going to use these for a super cute craft. Um, the first thing we're going to do to prep this is I want it to look like ceramic or like terracotta almost. So we're going to add some texture using a couple of products today. I'll be using a mohair from Wise Owls Chalk Synthesis Paint, but you guys can use Restoration. It's really close to this color. And then I'll also be using Salt Wash to create texture on my pots. So we're going to mix those together first. And then my plan is after we've gotten all the texture, yummy texture on there, that we can go over with some transfers. And so I have the floral anthology sheet. So we're going to go through this and see what we can find. And then my new favorite. Well, it's not new anymore, but it's still my favorite. Um, the traditional pots transfer. I thought this would be perfect, right? It's traditional pots and we're doing pots, right? So that's what we're going to be using for today's project. Um, but we're going to have to start by mixing together um, our salt wash with our paint in order to make the paint thick enough to create the texture that we want. I get a lot of questions about how to mix your salt wash and your paint, like, you know, how much. Start off with 50-50, so your ratio will be one to one, and then you'll just add um, additional paint or more you know, um, salt wash depending on the texture that you want. Um, for today I'm looking for a pretty thick texture you guys because I'm going to spread this on the pots um, and the really cool thing about using um, the paint additive to your paint is if you spread it on super thick you get these really yummy cracks that happen. Um, as it dries and I just think that adds to the beauty of um, what we're like, hoping to create today. You can use just about anything to spread this on here. I'm going to use one of my little spatulas to spread it on here but I could just as easy as use a spoon but I like the spatula because of the angles. It just kind of makes it easier to spread it on there. So I'm just going to spread this over the surface of my pot and you can create texture on here as you go if you want it. So if you wanted it to be, um, to have a little bit more texture, you could go in and you could stipple it on there. Um, I'm wanting it to, I just want to spread it because I just think that texture is fabulous. It looks like an old pot that's been forgotten about and left in the garden for years, which is what I'm going for. Now I know someone's asking, Royce, how thick are you spreading that on there? Well, I'm spreading it on here about, if I had to guess, I would say like an eighth of an inch thick. So it's pretty thick. There's a texture on these pots and I really don't want to see that texture. So if you spread it out and you start seeing the texture from the pot, then you'll know it's not thick enough. Um, if you like the texture of the pot, then, you know, that's fine. That can also be a texture that you can add to your final finish, right? You can have some areas that are really thick where you can't see the texture and some areas where you can see the texture. So once I have it all covered, you guys, I have this larger spatula here and I'm just going to mix it with a little bit of water 
and I'm gonna go over the surface just to kind of smooth it out some because I don't necessarily want the texture from my spatula on my piece. So I'm just gonna take my, I just missed it, a little bit of water on here and that's gonna help me to just kind of smooth this out some and get rid of some of those spatula marks, not all of them, but it's just gonna help to kind of smooth that down a little bit. And this really does work best with a metal spatula um, than it does with, say, like a, a plastic for some reason. And I'm just smoothing it out a little bit. I'm not going to get rid of all my texture, just some of it. And so um, that's it, you guys. And I'm going to let this dry. I will say that when I'm when this dries, I'm probably going to go in and add some more texture just on the inside of the rim because when I put something in here, you're going to be able to see the inside of the rim of this. So you'll want to put some just on the inside. Um, I can't do it now because I can't hold it, right? But after it dries, I want to do that. And generally when I'm making these, I'm batching a bunch of them, so it's not a big deal. So we're going to set this aside. And this is pretty thick, so this probably won't, won't be ready for me to move to the next step until tomorrow. So I have this pot now that is um, all dried and ready to go. Um, on this one, you guys, I did take my 320 grit sanding pad and I just sand it down the area here in the front where I plan to put my transfer. So, so you guys know what? So I just changed my mind. So this pot is going to go in my living room and it's going to be like kind of springy, but I, I think I'm going to paint it dark. I'm going to paint it black. I'm going to paint it black just really quickly because I think that um, it's just going to look better in my space if it's black than if it is um, a light color. And so look, I have my broken paintbrush here. I'm using it because all my paint brushes are in the jar purgatory right now. So I have to wash brushes today. But I'm going to put a quick coat of black paint on this, you guys, and we'll let it dry. And when we come back, um, we'll move forward with the rest of the project. So you guys, I had some of the mohair, or the restoration, if that's what you're using, on my brush. And I ended up with this really nice, soft color. So it's like a really dark gray as opposed to a stark black. And I think I liked it better. So I went ahead and get that. Why is Al's black is like jet black. It is dead black. I love it. But for this project, we softened it up just a little bit. Now, the cool thing about using texture, you guys, is it allows you to create layers really easily. And so, and I know, I'm completely off script here, y'all. My VA is giving me the side eye right now, just so you guys know. But um, I've created texture on this piece, and I have the light color underneath and the darker color on the top. So I can take my paper towel or any wet towel, right, lint-free towel, and I can actually wipe back the black and reveal some of that white underneath just to create extra interest in my pot. So... Uh, you could choose another color, like maybe if you had done a really pretty blue underneath, you could wet that to reveal that. I can even use my sanding block if I want to be a little bit more aggressive and reveal more quicker. And just kind of go over the areas where there's texture and sand back the black to reveal um, the second color that's underneath. And it's just another way to add dimension to my piece. Um, if I wanted it to have like a lot of the distressed on there, I could have just used a lot more texture, right? Because the texture points are where you create the opportunities to be able to um, kind of sand back or wipe back um, to have that color peeking through from underneath. So before I put my transfers on, you guys, I am going to seal this piece. I love sealing my pieces with Wise Owl's One Hour Enamel. I know I say that and people don't know what I'm saying. So um, it's Wise Owl's One Hour Enamel is what I love to use with my transfers because the um, One Hour Enamel is a self-leveling product. And I think that the smoothness of this product is what the transfers like so well. So if you've been challenged to use your transfers, you may want to try the Wise Owl One Hour Enamel. 
um, as your clear coat to put your transfers on because seriously, it makes a huge difference in how well they adhere. And I have not labeled this bottle. I'm pretty sure it's one our enamel. <laughs> we'll see. It could be varnish. Either one is fine. The varnish works good too, but I just noticed that um, the one hour enamel and the transfers really do love each other. So whenever I'm using transfers, um, I do try and use the one hour enamel. And so I'm just going to seal my pot. I'm using the matte formula um, because that's what I prefer. But if you like a little sheen, you can use the satin or um, the semi-gloss for more sheen on your projects. But I always like things matte. And so I'm just gonna seal this really quickly and I'm gonna shoot it with my craft dryer. You guys, I love I love my craft dryer. I really do, because I can be so impatient. And my craft dryer is my best friend to help me speed through my projects. But I will say, if you're using the one hour enamel, right? And we love it because it's self-leveling. You'll want to let it dry on its own if that's what you're wanting to maximize is the self-leveling properties of the one-hour enamel. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to dry this so that we can actually get through the tutorial today, though. Okay, so now that my pot is all dry, you guys, let's put some stuff on it. Let's make it purdy. So I want to start with some topography. So I'm going to use the traditional pots transfer from Iron Orga Design and I'm putting this on a dark piece. And so the reason, one of the reasons why I really love this transfer in particular is because you get the transfers in the traditional dark color, which is like the almost black, but you also get them with this really pretty blue, like a China blue and white. So even though I painted my piece dark, I'm still able to um, use this transfer to add some topography. I think I'm going to use, I'm going to use this one. Of course, you guys can't see it yet because it's white, but when I start transferring it, you'll be able to see which one I'm using. So I'm just going to trim the one off that I want to use. And I always put my transfers back in the booklet, you guys. Um, when you're using your transfers and you have leftover pieces, you want to be super cautious because if your um, transfer comes into contact with something and there's no backing paper, it's going to stick to that thing. So I always make sure that my transfers are back in my booklet and that my booklet is secured so that I don't have to worry about like wasting any transfers or getting stuck to things that I don't want them to get stuck to, right? So I'm going to use the white transfer. And then I also have the floral anthology transfer from IOD. Um, these are so pretty. These flowers are, they're like etchings, um, but they have color. And so let's choose one that we want to use for our project. You guys can see I've, there's four pages of flowers on here. So I've already used quite a bit of these. So I'm actually going to be just using a scrap. I think that this pink would be pretty on the black. So I'm going to cut that out. I wish I could keep some of this greenery. I changed my mind. I'm going to use this white bloom right here. Um, this light bloom. I guess it's not really white. And I'm going to fussy cut because remember... Um, Whatever you see on the artwork is what's going to transfer onto your project. And so I'm just going to kind of cut around so that I only get what I actually want to transfer onto my piece. And I think that that's going to be pretty. Now I'm looking to see what's going to fit on my project because I don't want to waste the transfer. If I just leave it like this, what's going to happen when I remove the backing, I'm going to end up wasting all this at the bottom and I don't want to waste any of it. So I'm going to cut it off and I'll just use it on the other side of the pot. So I'll still use it, but I'll use it somewhere else. And so that way that doesn't have to go to waste. That's going to be solid though. I don't know. Okay. I changed my mind again. I'm going to use the pink ones. When you're stacking your transfers to create a design, you really want to be thoughtful about how they're going to work together. So I initially chose this one 
right? Because it's really pretty. But if I stack this on top of my topography, it's gonna literally cover up the whole transfer, right? So I'm getting something that's a little bit more wispy and that has a little bit more open space so that we can really highlight that space. Um, we can really highlight both transfers in the same space. Whenever you buy a transfer, you guys will get a stick. It, it'll be clean, not like mine. Um, this one's already been through some things. And this is what you're gonna use to rub your transfer onto the surface. And there's a piece of tape on this one because I've actually taped it together to make sure that that backing does not come off of my transfer. I'm just gonna rub it on there. Now this surface is a round surface, you guys. So when you're doing transfers on like uneven or round surfaces, there's some things you wanna consider. This piece, if I try to lay it down the whole thing, I'm gonna end up cracking my transfer. So I'm gonna cut a slit just right here on my transfer. And what that's gonna do is allow my transfer to lay down flat. And so I can go through and just kind of cut slits all along there. So that my transfer can lay down flat and I'm also just gonna kind of rub my transfer down as I go, rather than try to force it to lay down flat and end up cracking a piece of my transfer. And whenever I get my transfer on my surface, I always take my backing paper and just kind of rub over it. And what it does is just to ensure that you have really good contact between your transfer and the surface of your product, your project. Isn't that pretty? So even though this is a dark surface, this transfer still holds its own on the holds its own on the trans on the surface. So you don't always have to use white or light colors with your transfers. They do still stand out really well when you use them on darker colors as well. So let's get our other transfer down. I chose this one because it has a duck and we're kind of thinking about Easter, right? So I don't think I'm gonna be able to get the whole thing on there. So I'm gonna cut off these pieces that are not gonna fit and I'm gonna save them for another project on another day. But I think we should be able to get, there's a little crown on here, so I'll just save that crown for something else. I'll definitely use that for something else. Usually I'll put the topography underneath my image, but this duck was so cute and I didn't wanna cover him up, so. I'm actually putting my topography over the top of my floral. Layering your transfers is a really easy way for you to be able to create something that's custom and unique to you. So even though there are like thousands of people that are purchasing the same transfer, you can still layer your transfers in a way that makes them completely unique to you and allows you to express your specific vision. So that's my project for today, you guys. I hope to see you guys making these. You can find these, um, whoops, that's one that I did earlier. You can find these anywhere, Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart. I think Dollar Tree even has some of these, they're really small ones. Um, and they do come in different sizes, which is super fun. So you could create several of them in different colors, different sizes and sprinkle them around your space to either celebrate spring or to hurry spring up, which is what I'm trying to do. Um, again, you guys, my name is Royce Hunt Bell of Recycle the Treasures. You guys can find supplies that I used here today at Recycle.com. Um, I'll also have links below in the comments for you if you're looking for anything specific that I've used here today. If you guys like our videos, be sure and subscribe. We upload new videos every week. If you hit the bell, you'll actually get an alert when we upload a new video. Thank you guys so much. Remember you guys, you guys can absolutely do anything that I've done here today. You guys can do this. You can do it today. Bye.